Hey, it's Jordan with the Young Turks and TYT Politics. I'm here in Flint, Michigan, uh, reporting on the ongoing water crisis. But in addition to the water uh, crisis, there's kind of like a 30, 40 year crisis, I would say, here in Flint. And uh, there's a lot of corruption behind that. So we're going to have to peel the layer uh, one at a time. I'm here with John Gleason. You are the uh, county clerk here in Genesee County. Uh, you formerly uh, were state senator um, and other other uh, public offices here in Flint. So we've been talking and uh, there's, there's specific uh, lawmakers I want to look into, but also just the general uh, issues here. Um, I want to talk about the emergency manager first and then this receivership transition board. It seems to the outsider, not from Flint, there's a lot of um, undemocratic uh, officials, boards that have been inserted here in Michigan and Flint. Uh, that you don't really see in other uh, other states or cities. Can you kind of talk about that? Uh, because, for example, the, Sin the Flint City Council voted last night uh, to put a moratorium on water le on tax liens for the unpaid water bills. Yet it could be overruled by some receivership transition board. The whole Emergency Manager Act is so undemocratic. And what's unusual about it, those that use the democratic process to put themselves in positions to make decisions on that, they were seated under the democratic process, and yet they don't want anybody else to have it. The dictatorships don't work. We've seen enough evidence of that. And when Flint became ruled by an emergency manager, I was a senator when the law was changed, when we had the first Emergency Manager Act. If you had served in a capacity of policy making or decision making, you couldn't return as an emergency manager. Yet Ed Kurtz was here prior, Mike Brown was here prior, both as a city administrator and as a mayor. Darnell Early was here as a city manager and interim mayor after Woodrow Stanley. These were all retreads. There was some unknown influence to people such as myself and more importantly the citizens of Flint did, un did not understand what brought these appointments to fruition. Who did these men know? But they were, it was illegal when they were reseated as financial man. They couldn't under the old Financial Manager Act, they couldn't do it. And when they appointed Mike Brown, the day they appointed Mike Brown financial manager of Flint, I gave a floor speech in the Senate saying this was illegal that he served as city administrator and as mayor and did not have the lawful ability to come back in as a financial manager. So the best thing that we can do is offer full citizenship to the citizens. I guarantee you there's pipe fitters, there's carpenters, there's people that could fix this water crisis because of what they do for a career and the democratic process does not allow them to get engaged. That citizen is more critical to the recovery of this city than a financial manager or even a city council person. Well, so, citizens actually have skills. They have workmanship skills that can remedy the water. You don't see any city council person. You don't see a financial manager actually out there swapping out lines. Mm -hmm. These are highly skilled citizens that are undertaking that responsibility. But you should never take the vote away from citizens. Well, it also seems to the layman uh, whether you like a city council member or you like the mayor or not, what is the point of even having elections if you have a city council or a mayor that the city council will vote like last night for this moratorium on tax liens? I reach out to the mayor's office to see, will, you know, will the mayor be signing this? Uh, and I'm told, well, it's up to the receivership transition board. Well, if the city council's vote isn't uh, concrete and, you know, it could be overruled, if the mayor has nothing to do with it because the this phantom receivership board, the, the, the elected officials, the public are uh, electing and choosing, essentially are being overruled by an unelected uh, board of people. I would tell the council, keep doing what you're supposed to do. Because somebody else isn't doing what they're supposed to do, you should continue to do the responsible thing. Keep moving those policies forward. Stick up for the people that put you in office to represent them. It would be just a grand idea to pull all the addresses of those that get the final decision and see if they have to live with the decisions that they're holding other people to. How many are on that board that are actually City of Flint residents? 
That's an important question, and that's, we have a representative form of government. We do not have a dictatorship. When you have council people, nine of them that represent around 90,000 people, that's a pretty good spread on representation per individual. The council will know about how they're affecting, and more importantly, who they're affecting with a decision. This unmanned, unnamed, standalone entity, the recovery board, it should be dictated that whatever policy they implement on this citizenship, they have to live with it wherever they live as well. If they like the way the water's going here, then make sure that their home has the same situation as the citizens that I represent. And uh, moving from the water, so you as county clerk are responsible for uh, keeping documents, keeping campaign finance uh, reports, uh, flagging if there's any discrepancies um, or you know, any questionable uh, documentation or expenses. So in general, uh, I want to get to specifics, but in general, are you seeing uh, issues where there's basically unaccounted for money rampant through the city? Because all, all people inside Flint and outside of Flint here is the city's broke. There's no money. We need to, you know, increase the water bills and increase this. But it seems like money's moving around pretty, uh, fr pretty frivolously. Uh, and there's not many uh, police on the beat, so to speak, uh, for accountability on that money. I'm not part of that last bunch. We do our job and we do it very well. We hold everybody accountable. And yes, there's a lot of money being thrown around the county to make sure that the establishment continues to be the establishment, that the right people hold the right offices. You have to remember the Emergency Manager Act, <clears throat> the Emergency Manager Act was pushed, advocated for, and introduced by Democrats right from Flint, Michigan. The state senator and state rep that actually represented this city were the ones that were promoting and pushing emergency manager, I would say the dictatorship, to relieve the city of the elected body. I was in the House when my colleagues from this county were pushing, advocating for the emergency manager. And I actually went to the Senate hearing as a state rep. That's normally, that's a very unique thing to experience and I went in and I spoke against that legislation as a representative didn't even <clears throat> I didn't represent Flint I represented Flushing and Mount Rose and Vienna Township and Thetford Township not Flint but I said this is horrible when I see elected officials from a town giving up everybody's elected position but theirs state legislators should stay out of the way of local offices those that senator and that rep had no idea what the people were living under. Unfortunately, they had no foresight to see what they were eventually going to live under with that legislation. The total vote came back when I was in the House. They did their homework, like they always do. If they want to take something, they put a plan of action in place. 38 senators, 110 reps, me, voted no. And I believe I was the only legislator in Lansing at that time that said, no, we're not going to give one person control over a city. It's against everything. <clears throat> I'm a grandson of immigrants. We came here so that we could be part of government. And how they implement the horrendous policy is making sure that the right policymakers are elected. And even more, unfortunately, is those that they give the resources to, to make sure that there's no compliance with the campaign finance report. They're buying the seats. There's no question the establishment is buying the seats. And they're doing it by just frivolous campaign finance reports. I, as a county clerk, have forwarded all my concerns, which are many, to the State Bureau of Elections. We have talked to the Attorney General. We've talked to the State Police that what is going on in this county is illegal. But there's no interest from any law enforcement agency to make it go away. I'm not going to quit. We're going to keep pushing. I'm going to keep doing what I have to do as the clerk of this county. But I can tell you one thing. This is one county that has for sale signs on seats. No question about it.